If you've been looking for a more natural way to treat the potential microclots that can exist in ME-CFS or long COVID, rather than just going to Germany and getting that extremely expensive blood washing procedure done, help apheresis, or finding a doctor to prescribe you the anticoagulant therapy because that would actually be risky and involve side effects. My name is Patrick Usher. I'm an ME-CFS patient and author of the book Understanding ME-CFS and Strategies for Healing. And today I am talking to Dr. Courtney Craig, who has spent most of her professional, academic and personal life at learning about and also dealing with ME-CFS. And today we are learning about Dr. Craig's recent and very successful experiment with taking fibrinolytic enzymes. That is to say, enzymes which actually break down fibrinogen or the main clotting factor in the blood. And in particular, Dr. Craig will be sharing with us her experience with taking natto kinase. Now, this is a supplement that is often talked about in the ME-CFS and long COVID world, and it can sometimes work really well for people. And Dr. Craig is certainly one of them. And so listen on to learn exactly the changes that occurred for Dr. Craig once she started to take natto kinase and what this has led her to reflect on in terms of what she may have been suffering from for a very long time without knowing it. Before we get going, I should say that Dr. Craig has kindly offered viewers of this channel 15% off her video courses on nutrition and ME-CFS. That's a pure discount code, not an affiliate link. Please check out more details in the description box below. Um, now, I know something else that's been helping you are fibrinolytic enzymes. Um, so these are, I guess, like lumbrokinase and natokinase and, and things that can help dissolve microclots in the blood. Can you tell us a bit more about these and, and the benefits that you've seen? Yeah, so these are things that I, I'd i heard about for a long, long time. I mean, they're not really new. Um, they've been around and natokinase, and I think was isolated in the Japanese um, like back in the 70s or something like these these things are not new or novel but it's one of those things that I think I just kind of forgot about <laughs> because uh, when you're you know dealing with this for so long that happens a lot and also you're like did I try that before I don't really remember but maybe I did you know you look at the label and you think that looks familiar so it was kind of one of those moments for me where I like I thought I tried this but maybe I haven't actually and it was kind of back in my forefront because it's been talked about so much in the long COVID community because we have more research on finding microclots in these patients. We do have, I think, maybe one, maybe two studies showing them in MECFS, but um, the technology has improved with the microscopes where we can actually see these better. So, you know, this is kind of new in that way that pe and people are talking about these things again, even though these treatments are not new. And they've been studied quite a lot. So the Japanese have led the way on, on both of these. So the lumbrokinase is derived from the spit of the earthworm, and the natokinase is derived from the fermented soybeans, uh, and they've been used for decades for stroke prevention, and there's quite a bit of literature on that. So they've been kind of proven to be safe, but they can't be patented, so yeah, not a whole lot of interest uh, in them. But now with long COVID, uh, and a lot of people are writing about this online, and I have friends here and pa patients I work with, bringing this back into my mind again. and. Uh, I'm like, I don't think I've ever tried this, and I'm not sure that I have microclots. I don't know, because you have to have specialized microscopes to really see them. I know that there are some like indirect blood markers that can be done um, with a clinician, but I don't necessarily think that they can actually tell you that you definitely have microclots. So yeah. I didn't I didn't know. First pausing there, just Courtney, you're you're right that yeah, it's hard. There's no the, the only direct way is to do the actual microclot test, which I think is now becoming available um a bit. I mean I think there's a place in Switzerland that you can get it done and there's somewhere in America. This is from the work of Risha Pretorius that 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 is now becoming mm -hmm. available. Um what one thing that may be indirect that might give a hint is the ESR rate. Yeah. Um so that, that rate at which the blood settles down in a tube and if it's if the blood is thicker, you know, the score will be lower potentially because there's more resistance. Um, and I know that my ESR rates have been been very low, like one or two, and that I definitely had a lot of microclots because I actually went to do the help apheresis treatment um, in, in Bayreuth. And there my blood was actually black because it had been, um, it was so thick. Um, so there are some there are some clues. D did did you look at the ESR rate in your case? I haven't had that checked for quite some time now. Um... 
I hadn't, maybe I should go get that done. It's interesting. And it's interesting you, you bring that up because um, Dr. Jared Younger, who is kind of leading the way on some LDN treatments, among other things, really brilliant researcher in our field, had mentioned in his studies on LDN that the small, small clinical trials that weren't placebo controlled. But in his studies, the patients that had, I think, the highest ESR rate were more likely to respond favorably to LDN. So that's interesting. I don't know if there's some sort of connection there, yeah, but there might be. There might be some sort of connection. Like, uh, what about the color of your blood? Like, if you go and give blood in a take your get your bloods taken in a in a doctor's office, is it darker? Would you say? Um, I did that pretty recently. I'm trying to trying to think. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe, maybe it is a little darker. Like, it's um, it's definitely not a pale red, like you would yeah. see with like uh, an, an anemia or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't thought about that. Um, I actually yeah, well, recently... I can, I can I think, tell you what photos of my blood. It was literally just black. I saw it so, on LinkedIn. I you, saw it. You saw it, yeah. Wild. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah, actually, pretty, uh, it was pretty wild on, for me. Yeah. On, on LinkedIn, uh, just a couple of days ago, I, I think it was there, I randomly found... Yeah. A MECFS doctor who is a cardiologist who is in Munich. And I don't know, I mean, again, divine intervention or whatever. Somehow I'm like, oh, this looks really interesting. Oh, they're, they're using um, rapamycin. They're using uh, uh, immune absorption, I think. And I think I'm going to call them up and have an appointment because I don't actually have anyone locally here. Um, because I need someone to be able to prescribe LDN to me. I've run, I'm about to run out. And I'm kind of interested to try rapamycin as well. And maybe I could do this uh, microclot testing to see, because it'd be very good to have someone with a cardiology background uh, to kind of look at these blood-related things. So I'll have to get yeah, back to you. I'm very excited yeah. to find this, this doctor and have a chat with her and see what she thinks. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting. And, and so with with taking these fibrinolytic enzymes, Courtney, like what, what can, have you noticed a positive effect and what would you say it was? Again, dramatic, dramatic. I don't know. I guess I'm lucky I have uh, dramatic <laughs> positive responses sometimes. I, of course, yeah. have had a lot of like no response from a lot of treatments I've tried to. But yeah, within um, a couple days, I was noticing. So the, <clears throat> I'm taking natokinase. Uh, I was just taking like one capsule. I think you have to take it away from food. I think that's very important because it's a protein and it will digest in the stomach if there's food present. So I'm, I'm, I was just starting with one capsule, you know, start low, go slow. And um, I don't know, I, I go to the gym uh, pretty frequently here, maybe two, three times a week if I'm lucky. And uh, I just kind of very gently do some exercises there. I will lift some weights and um, I use the sauna. Uh, and I sit on an exercise bike for a little bit at a low tension if I'm up for it. So usually I can only do about 10 minutes on an exercise bike at a pretty low tension just to kind of not push it too far because sometimes I do push it too far. And then I, I lift weights for a little bit. So starting the natokinase, my gym experience changed pretty quickly. Uh, and I was like, wow, this feels a lot different. You know, these weights are easier to lift. I can now do 20 minutes on the bike and, you know, I'm on my phone at the same time. And then I look at the timer and I'm like, what, you know, lost track of time, 20 minutes. And I can still like breathe easily. So it's kind of doubled my exercise capacity. Uh, you know, I'm still, I'm still, I'm not pushing it. I'm just like, okay with where it is. Um, and, and also that's just, in the from, that's from one natokinase. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. For about a week of, of one natokinase. Uh, I just feel like better breathing. So one thing uh, that I've had for, gosh, since, since my early 30s, anytime I would do sort of cardiovascular fitness, anything that would increase my heart rate would give me mild chest pain. Uh, mm -hmm. And the more I would do it, it would get more severe, kind of like a very gentle angina, I suppose. So gentle now angina, I'm, yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I'm not experiencing that, which makes it like regular angina, which is due to uh, clogged arteries and, and potentially clots in the coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wow, do I have 26 years of microclots in my body? Like that, that just, that makes my head explode. It makes me very emotional yeah. to think about. Cause, uh, yeah, me too. I, me too. I, I did as well. I felt that way after when I saw that blood, cause I didn't know if I had it for sure. But when I saw the black blood coming out, I was like, my God, what my body has been suffering with from these. Yeah. And, and doing and a treatment, like chest. you're, yeah. yeah, you're preventing like a future stroke or heart attack potentially. Like that's, 
That's amazing. Yeah. Like, I, I used to feel that the blood flow to my brain was so bad that I was going to get a stroke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's wild to think about, um, you know, and I and I think that's what's happening. So I I did up the dose. So I'm taking twice as much now, and I'm thinking about tripling the dose now. I feel like it's kind of leveled off in its effectiveness, but I've definitely been able to do more. I have more stamina, um, and pretty much everything I do. Uh, I live here on the it's the German second floor, but the American third floor uh, because we number it differently. But uh, walking up those steps a, a couple times a day is always a bit challenging. Like I. I really feel heavy in my legs. I'm also carrying my six kilo dog with me because he uh, is afraid of the steps. So I do that at least three times a day, up and down. And now with the natokinase, like that's like a, a, a good metric for me, like how easy it is to get up and down the steps. And it's been yeah. much better. That's uh, brilliant. I'm like, would you think really of bringing brilliant. in other of these treatments like the lumbro kinase or just stick with the natto kinase? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's, I mean, they both kind of have the same or similar effect. I don't think it's ne necessary to take both at the same time. But again, you can take them in pretty high doses, uh, very safe. So I'm going to increase my dose, a, a, maybe one more and see how it goes. It's relatively new. I've only been doing this, I guess, maybe two months. Um, but it's, again, it's, it's nice to have another tool in the toolbox. I hope it continues to be beneficial. Um, and one thing, again, I like about this one, it's, it's, it's rather inexpensive here in Germany to, to buy that. So it's always good to have tools in your toolbox that are affordable and sustainable as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's brilliant. It's helped you so much. And it makes me think that maybe I should try. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I've probably maintained 70% of the benefits from the health apheresis, but I do feel like the microclots may have come back a bit. So to do something like that, I think would be, would be, could be really helpful for me as well. Um, this video is sponsored by Turney, the new artificial intelligence sidekick designed specifically for a select group of illnesses, including ME-CFS and long COVID. Now, Turney is not another chat GBT. Instead, the platform has indexed pretty much every single paper, every single conference, every single transcript from a YouTube or podcast uh, discussion in relation to ME-CFS and long COVID from the last 10 years. So when you ask Turney a question, you really get a very detailed answer from a wide variety of sources, which allows you to make the best possible decision for your own health. It is just $2 a week, but you can get a further 10% off using the code PATRICK10. Please follow the links down in the description box below. The first three weeks are entirely free.